Hey coders and welcome to episode one of our utility service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this episode we're going to be explaining on how to create blobs. So we've touched on blobs in previous episodes within this course because quite honestly there are a lot of Apps Script APIs which require binary and blobs as its input, but we've never actually fully explained what a blob is. When I was first learning about blobs, I had a lot of questions and confusion about what it actually is because it kind of has a confusing enigmatic name. So I want you to think of blobs as basically just another data type. So you have your integers, you have your strings, you have booleans, and quite a lot more of data types. I want you just to include blob within those uh, array of data types. So basically a blob is, is an acronym for binary large object and the focus of that is that first word, it's binary. So basically a blob is mostly just binary. There's a couple other things, but it's basically just binary. It stores data in binary format. So basically you can, you can add text or you can have text become a blob. You can have HTML become a blob. But you generally wouldn't uh, want to use blobs for those use cases. You would generally reserve blobs for uh, more complex data structures such as multimedia files like pictures or audio or videos because it's a lot harder to store a say picture on a database because there's no really structure to that data. So you would just convert it to a blob which is again mostly just binary and that makes it a lot simpler because again pictures are, are just made up of pixels which are really just bytes which which are binary. So that is what a blob is and let's jump on over to our next slide to see what methods we have to create a blob. So really there's only one method and it's very straightforward. It's called new blob and you just pass it in some data and if you have some uh, uh, some uh, additional data such as the content type or the name of that uh, data, then you can pass that in. But let's jump into the code right now and we'll see an example of creating blobs using the utilities service. To demonstrate creating new blobs using the utilities.newblob method, let's imagine that you have been assigned to help with UPenn commencement and your task is to create a slide deck showcasing and displaying all of the different graduating seniors on the Jumbotron during the commencement ceremony. So you go into your favorite slideshow presentation software, Google Slides, and here's what you have so far. You have the title slide that reads UPenn Commencement Graduating Seniors. But from here, what you want is each, uh, each slide following this, you want it to be a mini bio of an individual senior. So how are you going to get that data to create all of these slides? Well, one way you could do it, one idea that you had, is to uh, copy this URL right here and mass email all of your seniors this URL so that they can input their data. You're going to instruct them, hey, create a new slide, and then put things like your name and a picture of yourself on your slide. Well, there are two problems with this approach. One is a lack of standardization. So you're not going to, when you when a senior comes in to this slide deck, they're going to create a new slide. They're going to put their name wherever they want and their picture wherever they want. And that is going to be very unique and different from all of the other seniors. So you're going to have a bunch of slides that are not standardized. They don't look the same. And a lot of them might not be uh, approved uh, by the commencement um, by the commencement board. So that is one problem. And the other problem is a lack of security. So again, you can't just give this uh, URL to all of your seniors because they might come in here and accidentally delete slides. They may add things that you don't want. And it, it's, just, it's, it's just not secure at all. So to uh, solve for your standardization problem, you go into your master slides, you go into view, master, and what you do is you create a template slide. So here is your template slide, and now basically this will solve the problem because what you can do is you can tell your seniors, hey, when you go into your Google Slides, instead of just clicking on this new slide button, go into new slide with layout and select the pen student highlight 
layout right here. So that is great, and now they can uh, they can put uh, say their name in the title slot, and say their their school or their college in the subtitle slot, and that is all great. However, you still have the problem of security. So how are we going to solve for that? Well, the other idea that you had instead of just mass emailing your seniors this this URL to the Google Slides you're going to now create a web app and this web app is going to be on top of this on this Google Slides uh, presentation right here so the web app instead of again mass emailing your seniors this link you're going to mass email your seniors this link and right here is the link to the web application which is displayed right here all right, so the instructions here is to register for this year's commencement. They're going to add a name, their school, a yearbook quote, and then finally a photo of themselves. And then once they hit the submit button, you want all of this data that they just inputted to, uh, to flow right into this template right here and create for them a new slide. So that solves, again, the problem of standardization as well as security. So let's go check out our app script project and see what we have so far. We have our server side functions such as do get, create new slide, and external uh, include external file. Let's go now over to our client side code. Again, I'm not going to be going over all of this too extensively because this is not a course on HTML and web development. This is a course on the utility service. But just so that we have a frame of reference, let's go over it quickly. So we have our head, we are including an external style sheet right here. And then our body is very straightforward. We just have a bunch of labels and inputs as you can see on the web app, which is rendered right here. We have our input fields and then we have our corresponding labels that go to that. All right, so let's go to now our CSS. Again, I'm going to be pushing this code to GitHub, which you'll be able to review more in depth. But for those who are curious to see how it was stylized, here is a quick look at all of these styles. All right, and now let's go into our client side JavaScript. So what we're doing again is once we once we click this submit button right here, we are adding a event listener. Once we click to it, we're going to have this callback function right here. This is going to fire, it's going to get the data from all of the input fields, including the name, the school, the quote, and the file input. And it's going to store that in constants called name, school, quote, and photo. But again, we can't just get the photo, right? Because the photo is very unstructured data. So we can't just pass a photo into, say, a, into this function right here, like create new slide. We need to convert it into something that is transferable. So we get our uh, file reader object out right here. We instantiate a new file reader object and store that into a constant called reader. We are going to be now, uh, after we again click the submit button, we are going to read the contents of this file input as an array buffer. So what is an array buffer? So it's basically just a uh, it's just a array of binary. That's basically all that it is. So we're passing in that photo right here and we're going to be converting it or we're going to be reading it as a array of binary. But again, binary is not what we really want. We want something a little bit more structured than just binary. So we are now adding an event listener. Basically, after we read it, we are going to be calling this callback function right here. And we are going to be now passing in the result of this array buffer, and we are going to be converting it into a uint8 array. So basically that means is it's going to be now an 8-bit array, so basically a byte array. And because there's a lot of different ways that you can read an array buffer, right? You can have 16-bit arrays, you can have 32-bit arrays, you can have signed, and you can have unsigned uh, arrays or bytes. And, and there's just a lot of different ways, but what we want is the 8-bit array, and we're also going to have it unsigned. All right, so that is going to be our bytes, perfect for a photo, because again, a photo is basically um, a bunch of pixels, and each of those pixels are composed of red, blue, and green inputs, and those red, blue, and green, or red, green, and blue inputs uh, are 8 bits each, so one byte, 8 bits. All right, so that is why we are converting it to an 8-bit array. So we're storing that now into an object, and that's going to be the bytes um, property right here. So then after all of this is done, we are finally going to be running our create new slide uh, server-side function, and we're going to be passing in the, the, the data from the input 
of the name, the school, the quote, and finally the photo data. All right, so if you didn't understand all of that, don't worry too much. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, again, this is a utilities playlist, not a file reader playlist or a, uh, uh, a web design playlist. But let's go now into our server side functions. And again, we are going to be we are going to be calling the function create new slide. And here it is right here. So we have our create new slide. Uh, we're going to be getting first a reference to the slide deck right here. And that is what we are doing in line eight. In line nine, we are going to be appending a new slide, right? Because each senior is going to get their own slide. So we're going to be appending a slide once this submit button has been hit. And what slide do we want to append? Well, we want to append that template slide, right? So we are going to be getting that from our layouts. If you remember, this is the 11th uh, layout or index 11 at least. And we can confirm that by going into our master. Here are all of our layouts. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 right here. So this is the 11th index. This is the slide that we want to append to our slide deck. So we say slides, append slide. And then after we have a reference to that new slide that we have just appended, we are going to be getting the placeholder, all of these placeholders right here. And then we are going to be setting the text of those placeholders uh, um, based on the data that we receive. So the text is going to be the data that we receive from this web app right here. So the first one is going to be the name, the, the, the subtitle is going to be the school, and then the body is going to be the quote. Again, all of this is covered, all of this functionality is covered in my slides, uh, my slide service playlist. So if you want more information on how all of this works, check out that slides playlist, uh, the slide service playlist. But now uh, we are going to be moving on to utilities. So again, we have just inputted our name, our school, and our quote. We have one more thing, and that is our photo. So how to do this is we say slide dot insert image. So this we have three, or we have we have some we have some options right here. We have image URL. We have uh, just a slides image, but we also have the blob source, and this is our only option because again, we don't have a slides image right off the bat, and we don't have a image URL either because it's not on the web. It, is, it has just been inputted into, into this uh, input field right there. So how we're going to read this image or how we're going to insert this image is via a blob source. So let me select this right here. And again, all we have right now is the photo data that is that is in an array of bytes, right? But we need it to be a blob. We need the data type of blob. So how we do this is we create a new blob. We'll say const and we'll say image equals utilities. And then we'll say new blob. Okay, so there's three options for this. We have the required parameter of data, but then we also have some optional parameters of content type and name. I'm not going to select this right now. If you want to see an example of how these two optional parameters work, I would suggest checking out my episode 10.3, which is the Puppygram web app, and where I did an example of these two optional parameters. But again, for now, I'm just going to be selecting the this uh, option right here. So conveniently, this new blob takes in a byte of rate, which is exactly what we have in our photo data. So I'm going to be now saying photo data dot bytes. I'm going to be accessing the bytes property. Again, if you remember, we're passing back this photo data, which is a object right here, JavaScript object. And one of those uh, properties is the bytes, which is what we're going to be accessing right here. All right, so now we have this uh, array of bytes and we're going to be creating a new blob from that. And then once we have that blob, we are going to be passing that into our insert image right here. All right, and then all of these parameters are just for positioning on the slide. So I'm just going to position it real quick. I'll say top of 60 with the 220 and height of also 220. We're gonna make this a square. All right, so that should do the trick. So let me just save it now. And if I go back into our web app and refresh the web app, let's cross our fingers and hope that this works. Let's just go in here and exit out of this. All right. So I'm going to say my name is David Weiss. School is Arts and Sciences. Your book quote, I'll say live long and prosper. 
All right, and then the senior photo, here we go. We have one right here. So I'll open that. All right, so let's hit this submit button now and we get this loading prompt right here. But if it works correctly, we should get this prompt that says, congrats, you are now registered. So let's go back into our slide deck and there we go. We have our new slide that has just been added and it is a beautifully looking slide. It has my name and it has my college and also my quote. Also the photo which we have created and passed into this, uh, into this slide deck via a blob. All right, so let's just do this one more time just to establish that it is indeed working. I will refresh this page and I'll say now another student, Jake E. Bright, another graduating senior. He is also in the Arts and Sciences College. Yearbook quote will say, if you ain't first, you're last. And let me just put a uh, apostrophe there because we are indeed Penn graduates. We know our grammar. All right, so now let's go and select a senior photo. And there we go, here is a good one. So we'll say open and we'll say submit. And we can go, um, we can, we can confirm that it worked because it says congrats, you are now registered. Let's go into our slide deck and there we go. As you can see, these two slides are now perfectly standardized and they look quite beautiful. All right, so that is it. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the very next episode.